Hello and welcome to ET Auto. What you see behind me is not just a, a huge pipe. It is the set to be the world's longest test track for Hyperloop. And Hyperloop, as we know, is set to be the next uh, frontier in terms of mobility options. To tell us more about this and India's effort to build a Hyperloop uh, technology, we have with us Professor Satya Chakravarti from IIT Madras. Professor Chakravarti, uh, pleasure meeting you as always. Yeah. Uh, tell us, this this uh, effort started what about six years ago, seven Correct. years ago? Yeah, I think the, the idea started sometime in 2018, mm. and uh, by about 2020, we realized that we should not be focusing just on the pod, but also the tube. The tube is actually more like the elephant in the room because mm. that's what actually has to run kilometer after kilometer. Yeah. And we need to focus on the tube in order to bring down the cost of Hyperloop to be something that's affordable for the common uh, citizen. And uh, so we actually worked on this tube. We have a patent on this tube. Uh, we have uh, the lightest tube that's possible. And the light weighting is not from a uh, performance point of view, but more from a cost point of view. Because we actually have to pay by the um, the, uh, the amount of steel that we have to use. Right. Um, so that's uh, uh, the, there, there is some IP in this right. uh, that we have uh, clocked. So at what technology readiness level is it currently? I mean, it's moved much beyond the lab project. Now it is almost... So this this is actually a subscale uh, tube, which is mm. at 2 meters. The right. full-scale tube would be somewhere between 4 to 5 meters. Right. Uh, but it, this packs pretty much all the technological elements at the most detailed level uh, for a straight tube. Is it as close as possible to real world? There is, this is real world. Uh, Almost as, real as world. You can get at this scale. At this scale. Right? So all we have to do is to just scale it up. And yeah. uh, we don't really see much of a scale up challenge as such in the tube technology that we have already cracked. Mm. Uh, we should be able to go uh, directly. We will now start focusing on things like turns mm. and uh, uh, lane branching, all of those things in vacuum. And it's to simplify it, it's it's elevated, right? It's like uh, right. So this is magnetic, actually yeah, electromagnetic. So, correct. So inside inside this tube is a track. Mm. The track actually pro provides the possibility of a magnetic levitation. So the pod does not really come in contact with the track. It has actually an air gap in between mm. the track, the track and the, the and the pod. And uh, so, but there's also a viewpoint that yes, it's a fantastic uh, proposition in terms of uh, sustainable uh, high speed uh, mobility, but perhaps. It's not so viable when it comes to practicality in terms of the cost involved, which is why, which explains Virgin Atlantic tried perhaps didn't work out. Uh, Elon Musk uh, did, uh, yeah, so kind of withdraw. I, I mean, in my view, they are actually all sitting in the wrong wrong part of the world. Uh, they are expensive for whatever they do. Uh, whereas here, we have a very viable technological capability in India that's uh, uh, available. Uh, so we have all the global talent, global level talent that's present here at a very viable cost for development. Whereas for them to actually develop where they have to get to is actually super expensive. They have to get, get past that hump. So we should not really compare with them at all. We have to look at every technology for what it's worth and then look at what its operating cost is going to be. And that's exactly why I said this tube is very, very viable, mainly because of the amount of uh, weight that we have brought down and got it to be as simple as possible. So weight is good, but cost factor. No, no weight is cost. Uh, yeah, weight is cost. Also. Weight is cost. Yes, That's yes. What I mean, see, as an aerospace engineer, for me, weight would be for flying and so on. Mm. But here, weight is cost. Mm. Because, um, amount of the, the, the cost is actually based on the number of the, 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 the amount of kg of steel that I'm going to put. Right. So we have actually bring, brought it down to such a low level that this is actually extremely affordable in the Indian conditions. Uh, and if you do it in India, right, successfully, it should actually be viable for everywhere else. Professor Chakravarti, I understand you have to leave because you have to, have a, you have to catch a flight, but how far are we from, uh, how, how far long do you think it will take for it to re be uh, applicable in a uh, real world uh, in scenario, uh, commercialize or should commercialize give, it? Yeah, should give ourselves at least about five years. Five years. Um, so when we now actually have to get to passengers, we have to establish the full scale pod, um, full scale tube track for a considerable distance. For passenger, we need to go up to about 600 km per hour. Only then will actually be economically viable as a competition to flights. And what we are essentially offering here is a flight-like speed at train-like cost. Yeah. Um, so for that to happen, we need to have literally millions of runs that we have to have clocked in order to establish the safety standards that's required. Evolve those standards, meet those standards. So those, the reliability um, engineering involved in this is what will take at least about five years is what my guess is. So this also, would, would you also therefore uh, argue that India is set to set a new standard for Hyperloop globally? I think so. I think if we just keep our heads down, focus on just making progress further and further and further, 
very quickly we will find that we are actually much ahead of any, everybody else. We are right now poised to be about the same level as everybody else. We have we probably caught up and we have got there and it's important for us to get to the point where we are way ahead of others. Uh, and then the perception always lacks reality. So the perception will catch up and then we will all start realizing that we are we are we are number one. Yeah. On that note, Professor Chakravarti, pleasure talking to you as well always. Indeed. Thanks Wishing so you much. and your team all the very best. Thanks a lot. Thank you. There you heard uh, Professor Chakravarti talking about the Hyperloop project, which would also in a way, uh, he says, that make India really set a new standard in terms of new the next next uh, uh, next frontier of mobility option, which is Hyperloop. Will India be successful on that we'll keep a track on this so keep following et auto for all the updates thank you for watching take care